Hey, did you know that on average, we only get to see about 10% of the impact of our podcast in our listeners' lives? Yet, there are times when, sure, engagement will be up and you'll feel like you're Oprah receiving tons of digital fan mail, and other times you'll just feel like you're at the bottom of the ocean screaming at the top of your lungs, and it feels like absolutely nothing is working, that your podcast numbers are stalling, that no one is working with you. I get it. (laughs) That was me this week. I, on this podcast, always talk about sharing how do I stay motivated when all I want to do is pretty much give up on this podcast altogether. But as you know, giving up is not what we do. So we look for proactive ways to use our podcast as the best tool of our business. And if we haven't met, hi, I'm Anna Xavier. I'm the founder of the podcast space. I'm a marketing expert and a strategist, and I help female entrepreneurs, impact-driven minorities and multilinguals use the show as the most powerful tool in their business in a sustainable way. So let's dive right in into this week's episode. Hey friend, I know that I've said this many times before, the podcast is a marathon and yes, we need tools to help us stay motivated and not lose hope because the reality is, as I shared a few weeks ago, and I think it was on episode 57 on my client Hettel's episode, about 90% of podcasters never make it to one full year of podcasting. So something like 50 episodes, like only 10% of the people that start a show actually make it, which is shocking, but honestly, not surprising. So what I want to do in this episode is not remove the idea that this is not going to happen because it will, you will get burnt out, you'll get frustrated, you will struggle to see the impact. But the reality is, I want to help you have practical tools to just stay motivated when you can't see the impact of your podcast. So let's dive right into number one. All right, number one is potentially the most important one. So don't make long term decisions on a bad day. So don't let emotions win over reasoning. And what I mean by this is, hopefully you didn't start your podcast on a whim because you were just excited about it because you maybe guessed it on someone's podcast and you wanted to do a show as well. I hope that starting that show was a strategic decision for both you and your business. So hopefully you did that. But the reality is, when we're feeling like we're having bad days, I want you to revisit your book of wins. And this is something that I talk about all the time on the podcast. So I want you to have like a notebook, a physical notebook. I like being able to write down some wins that have happened and kind of like have that tactile experience of writing down, not on our keyboards, because we are almost desensitized on just things happening. I feel like we're on autopilot most of our days. So taking the moment to actually write down something exciting that happened. Maybe it was a listener that reached out. Maybe it was um, someone that sent you the nicest email or someone that bought your product without you having to sell it. That happened over Christmas time. And I was like jumping up and down because someone bought two of my courses. And I was like, yay, I don't know this person. This is amazing. So again, write those things or include them in what I call of uh, the folder of success and impact. So that's just screenshots that you're taking um, from nice things that you get just basically like Whether that's on your computer, on your folder, I've talked about how I keep on my desktop a folder called Keep Going, Anna. You can also call it something like break in case of a bad day or, you know, open up in case I feel like I'm giving up on my podcast and business. So whatever it is, do that. Number two, it's time to going back to your why. So I want you to revisit episode 51 if you haven't. So sometimes... The reason why we're upset is because the timeline of our goals and the results isn't immediate. And for that, you have to stick with it to see the outcomes. This is something that I see all the time when I'm consulting with clients and even myself, right? When I'm working on my own projects, when I'm working with clients, sometimes 
like some of the impact of my coaching program. Like we work on setting the foundation to then seeing the results in the long term. Maybe it's six months from now, maybe it's two months from now. So clear example of this. So I was working with my client Hetel on my coaching program. If you haven't go and listen to episode 57, we're actually talking about the results and like how we um, set up the podcast. So one of the things that Hetel wanted was to figure out not only how to remove overwhelm from her processes, but also to connect in a more meaningful way with her community and establish the first what would be the first steps into monetizing her podcast, right? So I can't say that is a done deal, but she is about to secure her first podcast sponsorship, which is amazing, right? And this happened after working together. So again, you know, it just sometimes takes longer than you think. Another example is if you subscribe to my newsletter, you probably saw that a couple of weeks ago, I released uh, a newsletter feature, which was featuring Circle. Um, so I feature circle, I have used circle before, and this is not an ad, by the way, I'm just talking about this as an, an example. So I initially reached out to circle in October of 2023, and the newsletter feature only came out in, uh, kind of like mid February. So again, like it took some time. And when you're looking at why you're doing the podcast, why you want to stand out, like go back to it and see, well, maybe everything that you've been looking for is just not going to happen right away. But also something else is just, is that a metric that you're looking at? Because we can get so hung up on the downloads, we can get so hung up on having this or that person on the show, or topping the charts. If that's something that in the beginning of your journey was not important and you didn't set up a process for that to be an important thing in your show, well, then maybe that's why you're not seeing results and you're not motivated, right? So revisit those, super important. I'll make sure that I include all the links in the show notes. But let's move into number three. So one of the main causes is overwhelm and burnout, right? Um, you can't see the impact because you're just so overwhelmed with every single thing that you have to do, that you just can't even see the good stuff that is happening. So I want you to consider switching the publishing frequency of the show. So if you do a weekly show, maybe you do a bi-weekly show now or do only once a month, or maybe you do batching, really honing in what is the process. And I do this all the time with podcasters. I help them figure out a sustainable way to grow the podcast or to stay in the game. And it's so funny how sometimes people tell me like, hey, like, I feel like I want to throw this podcast out the window. And to me is like, well, have you maybe considered instead of doing episodical, um, just doing seasons and taking the break for the summer or taking the break when you're about to hit a very busy season. And people just kind of look at me as if like I found a cure for cancer or something. So sometimes like the most simple things work. Like for instance, I am in a season of uh, just exhaustion and I'm just really, really uh, low on motivation. And so these episode and if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm taking the week off. And so this episode is audio only because I just looked at my capacity and I was like, I don't want to edit a video podcast, period. And this is something that I talk about in depth on episode 24, which talks about if you have a tight schedule or if you're just overwhelmed, try these three practical episode styles. So look into that one if the reason why you can't see your impact is just you don't even, you can't even see it because you're just tired and exhausted. Number four, I want you to write down 10 reasons why you want to stop podcasting, but also 10 more reasons that you show has made your life or business better. And if you're looking for inspiration, some things may be like you got speaking opportunities. And this is where having that book of wins is super important to stay the course and to remember things. Because again, if you're like me, I have squirrel brain. So I can't remember half the things that have happened in the year. And that's why it's so important for me to have that notebook of achievements. So Maybe it was a speaking opportunities. Maybe it connected you to your industry. You're in a remote part of the country and um, 
your podcast has enabled you to talk to decision makers in big cities, or maybe it's just connecting to peers, or it gave you a new job, or it gave you purpose in a, a harder season of life. But I don't want you to just look at the numbers and say, okay, on, you know, 10 reasons why I, I want to stop podcasting. Like, those are more than the things that the impact that the podcast had in my life. Like, I also want you to weigh in um, the power of that podcast. And again, maybe when you're looking at the reasons why it made your life better, it's something that you're settled in right now and you don't need that anymore. So maybe that's when you need to stop podcasting. Maybe the impact that it had, it was before. And so again, maybe you're moving into seasons or maybe you're pausing the podcast. But something that I want to uh, let you know, actually, is like, please, please, please don't delete your podcast. Don't hide your podcast. Don't remove your podcast because I've seen so many awesome things happen from clients who maybe had a podcast in 2020, or maybe had a podcast in 2016. And they released content and then they're they're in a different season of life. Maybe they're the kind of person who launched a podcast, their business grew, but still they got leads out of that podcast that was released maybe three years ago or four years ago. Maybe it was someone and this is a real case study, like someone actually made business with someone else just because they found the business that they had online through the podcast and decided to do business together. And they started a partnership all from the podcast, which is, to me, amazing. Also, you never know how you may be helping someone else just by keeping that podcast live. Maybe if you don't want to pay for a subscription, just move it to Spotify for podcasters, which is free and have the podcast there or let it live on YouTube. You never know how you can change someone's life. And I actually have a funny story <laughs> later on that five. And that's the most important one, really move past your ego. I know that with social media, all we see is people talking about how they're making millions online, how they're making millions on their sleep, how opportunities are coming over. And they're not talking about the struggles of the day to day. They're also not talking about how that may have impacted their mental health or their family. I'll tell you what, I, one of the biggest fears that I have is that I become successful and just destroy everything around me because you know, you have to make time in order to make things grow. And to me, I'm just not willing to be a shell of a human and have nothing else in my life to account for just because I wanted to be successful before, you know, 35 or whatever it is, or because I want to make a specific number because I think that that's what everyone else is making. So again, going back into your why, there's nothing wrong with making money, but oftentimes the way that things are portrayed online most people are not actually talking about what they lost in order to make that happen. So when we're moving past our ego, I think we have to really think about like, it's not what you expect, like to have downloads, like my downloads at any given point are around, you know, 350 to 600. It really depends. And I want to ask you, like, are you frustrated because you're not seeing your impact? Or is it because you're not seeing the downloads or the visibility you expected. So many times we are actually not proactive about the engagement we want. So I want you to listen to episode 43, how to incorporate listener feedback and when to ignore it, because it's so important that we realize that sometimes as hosts, we don't realize we just like, I talk about this all the time. I think I'm just a regular person. I'm just a regular person, you know, sharing my expertise, serving you, helping you overcome your um, limitations and all that. I'm also working through my own imposters. And I choose to share a ton of stuff because I feel like I want to help you become a better host, a better entrepreneur. And if I want you to succeed, Sometimes I have to tell you like, hey, like this happened. I was expecting this episode to be super successful. It hasn't yet. Or this marketing technique that worked really well in the past is not working anymore. I don't know what's happening, but I'll report on that. So just really keeping things honest and true really helps things. 
I also look around and realize that um, there's a lot of hesitation in investment, for instance. I expected to have five clients sign in the new year. None of them signed. And a lot of that is one, because it's just the way that it is, the market it is. There's just a lot of hesitation and some subjects and some industries will be you know, more impacted than others, some industries will remain unchanged. But what I have been looking around is really taking a very analytical approach. It's not I'm not paying attention to necessarily what either people are saying, but also I'm looking at like, what they're not saying and what they're doing and how their engagement is going, how their downloads are going. And for instance, if you're in the US, you probably saw a big dip in downloads because Apple launched a new feature in the new iOS update that pretty much says if no one has listened to your past five episodes, they will stop auto downloading your podcast to their phone. So basically, that may be impacting your downloads. And you're like, what is happening? Why are my downloads so low? So really pay attention to what is happening. Again, not the ego, but like what is going on. And if you are working on an online business, I want to invite you to go to more offline events. Just Be with more people. If you have not seen, like, there's been just such an uptick in online events for podcasters. I'm part of a ton of them, actually. And it's hard to be online and to see our impact when we're not meeting people in real life, when we're not engaging in conversations. And last week, and I share this on Instagram. So last week, I went to a networking event, like that specific event, I wanted to go to it for, I'd say probably the best part of two years. And one of my former clients, she is a member. So we went together. And I've never been to this event, mind you, right? So I've been feeling in a funk, I feel like everything that I've been trying for the past, I don't know, maybe three months has been just really really hitting a wall. And while I know that the results and the impact will come later, I'm going back to live events. Honestly, that has been one of the most satisfying things where you realize that you're in a bubble if you're online. And so you're just following the people that do the same thing that you do. Most likely that's what you do. And so basically, you're comparing yourself to all these people when you actually go into the real world um, and into this event, you realize that everyone has a different background, everyone's do- doing different things, and you may be standing out from most people. So um, I went to this event, and it was just so random. I've been producing podcasts for the best part of 15 years now, but I have only really created uh, thought leadership content on social media for, I don't know, since I started the podcast space in 2020. So I want to remind you that when you publish content, there's the invisible crowd, right? Like the window shoppers, people who consume your content, they may not engage, but they're listening, they're watching, and they're taking value from what you're doing. And when I'm talking about you only seeing 10% of your impact, I'm talking about that, right? I'm talking about that because it's real. And I remember going to this event and the person I'm seeing actually is connected to me on LinkedIn and I just didn't recognize her. And so she starts talking about me because it was like, kind of like, tied in with the topic of the event. And I was like, what the hell is going on? I'm thinking I'm this itty bitty person. I have like 2000 followers on Instagram or whatever. I'm like, I'm small, like whatever. What are the odds of this person, again, talking about me on this event that I'm going for the first time? And then something else happened this week where I was listening to this podcast I'm going to be guesting on and I selected a random episode, literally a random based on the title. And the host and the guest are talking about me. And I'm like, what the hell? First off, thank you for that. (laughs) I really needed it. And just, just an invitation for you to pay attention to the signals, but to not give up, not disappear just because you're not seeing the impact of your work. Because there's ripple effects of every single thing that you're doing. And you may not see them, people are consuming them perhaps in silence. And the reality is you're still making an impact when you are choosing to be visible. So I want to invite you to just stick in the game or if you're deciding that you don't wanna stay, at least to not delete every single piece of content because you're like, ah, I don't want any trace of these failed project. All right, so keep 
it online. And if you need help figuring out how to make your podcast processes less overwhelming and how to get back in at least two hours of free time every week, or finally figure out what your podcast strategy is missing to hit your goals, you can visit thepodcastspace.com to learn more about how we can work together or visit the show notes. There's a direct link there to book a call and just figure out how I can help you. And so if this episode resonated with you, well, please be part of the 10% and let me know how this episode is changing your life, how it's changing your week, and if it was just the motivation you needed, or if it provided the clarity you were looking for to move forward. I've been in Xavier, and this was the podcast space. Just keep creating content that's imperfect, but moves you forward. I'll see you in the next episode.